Welcome to the One Life One Chance podcast. I'm your host, Toby Morris. Today, I have a very special guest. Uh, please welcome to the podcast, Mr. Brian McTernan. Hey, hey how's hi. it going, man? How are you? Um, so we've been hey. talking about getting on the Great. phone and chatting for a long time. Um, obviously, I met you a long time ago, and you were, you were a youngster, and I was a youngster. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, I was a really youngster. I was 12, I think. 12? Where, where was it at? Where did we meet at? Do you remember? I'm 99% sure that it was at the Dag Nasty Swizz show on the Wig Out of Denko's tour. Damn. At 9.30 Club when I was in sixth grade. Holy shit. All right, so the fact that you're going to shows in sixth grade is going to be a good um, good way to start good way to, <laughs> good, good way to start this. But right, we're going to take it back then. So you, you were born in Bethesda, Maryland, correct? Yep. And... um. And how how was it growing up in Maryland? Because I didn't grow up in Maryland. I ended up I ended up living there for like four and a half years of my life, but I wasn't born and raised there. So how was that growing up in uh and it was it was good. it was good. Like we we um we uh we we lived in a nice you know the funny thing is now it's real fancy the neighborhood we grew up in yeah but it it was it was you know we had like a real a small house with like two bedrooms one bathroom kind of like you know modest but but it was like real safe we could be in georgetown in like 10 minutes so yeah it was it was a good good location i mean i i had the kids i grew up with were were nice mike my my brother and i both went to um we went to catholic school like little flower up until i was in fifth grade and then in fifth grade like when i started getting into like punk and like hardcore and shit like that they told my mom that it might be better <laughs> if i went to uh public school so so you have two brothers yep um my older brother mike who you know and yep. my younger brother peter who i don't know that you've ever met yeah I've um him. he was into like hardcore for for a while he's a lawyer now he's not into music at all but um, he played good, clean, fun, right? He played drums in good, clean, fun, yeah. yeah. And then Mike, um, Mike, Mike sings in Damnation and Wind Tigers Fight and lots of other cool yeah. musical projects. What up, Mike? Um, so yeah, yeah. how did you get into that? How did you get into that music so early at that age? Well, so my brother had a friend whose older sister played guitar in the DC band At Wit's End. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I remember that, that name. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So at first, the, for, at first she got us. M- Mike started coming home with like the Smiths and the Cure and and Echo and the Bunny Men and like kind of like that kind of stuff, and we yeah. were into that. And then, and then I think like big turning point was we uh, we watched Suburbia. <laughs> nice. And it was like fucking life change. I mean, we we were like all revved up and. We we uh we we actually like went out in the neighborhood after watching it, like snuck out of the house and we had like ketchup and mustard and we were like writing like T R T R T R on cars. <laughs> For people listening, that means With totally ketchup. rejected. The rejected, yeah. Wow yeah. man. So I mean and then I was like, Oh so then I like my mom took me and I I got like I got like an army jacket and I got like combat boots and all that but then what happened was we really didn't know all of the like cool shit and yeah like uh, one day i was walking up the street in my neighborhood and i had a, i had a sex pistol shirt on so i was in i was in fifth grade so this was Crazy. 1986 and um i hear this voice and it's this guy standing in the doorway and he's yelling the sex pistols are bollocks <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? So he comes out and starts talking to me, and it's this guy, this guy Jason Corkin, and he's like, his dad is like, he's a, he's he's just moved to the neighborhood, and his dad's like the ambassador from New Zealand. Damn. And this dude had like the sickest record collection, and and he he starts telling I'm um, telling me that like Sex Pistols were like not good, and come check this shit out, and so. He like it was like a mission for him to find something that I loved. So he started playing. My, Mike and I, we'd go up there, and he was playing us like at first like GBH and Peter and the Test Two Babies, and and we were like, yeah, it's cool. And then he played a Agnostic Front, and that 
we were like, wow, this is really cool. And then mm. the like life defining thing that happened is he played me seven seconds. Uh, I think it was walk together, rock together. And I was like, Oh my God, this is, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is, this is my shit right here. And, um, and that, then that was like the beginning of like, and I mean, this, I was in fifth grade. It might have been the crew. I can't, now I can't remember, but, but, but either way, anyway, so, then, the greatest, yeah. so, so then what happened was we were so young. My, Mike was in seventh grade and I was in fifth grade. And then, but my parent, Jason was like this badass, like skinhead dude that was like, you definitely wouldn't fuck with. <laughs> and my parents loved him. And I'll never forget, like, one day, like, I love Seven Seconds. And one day I took, like, I went on a field trip with my swim team. in fifth, And I got home and I said to my mom, where's Mike? And she was like, oh, he went to see Seven Seconds with Jason. Oh. And I was like, oh, my fucking God, I didn't get to go. And so my brother's first show was Seven Seconds and Justice League at 930 Club. Mm. I remember those guys. And I... I was super fucking pissed. And then like two weeks later um, was my first show. My parents let Jason take me. It was Uniform Choice, Soul Side, Immoral Discipline, and Flaming Lips. Wow. That's yeah. Sick it, was, it, was, it, was, it was fucking awesome. I was at Hung Jury Pub. And then that was it. Like my whole life was music from that that moment forward. I, I'll never forget at that show. I I I I, uh, <laughs> I did like I had never heard Uniform Choice. Yeah. But like I was standing up front. And I was everybody singing along. I didn't fucking know the words, so I'm just like singing along. Every time he gave me the mic, I'd just be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I, I did a I did a stage dive. Damn. It, well. There wasn't much of a stage, but I, I did stage dive, and they passed me all the way around the circle pit. It's awesome. And when I got back, my brother pulled me down and, and said to me, don't ever do that again. If you get hurt, mom will never let us come back. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fifth grade? That's fucking crazy, man. Yeah, it was real crazy. And then, I mean, and then, and it was, I mean, it was especially crazy because that was kind of the beginning of that era yeah. when there was a lot of really rough a lot of violence at the dc shows mm -hmm. i mean it was and but we we like we would roll in with this kid jason who was like this badass skinhead dude that knew everybody and he was and everybody was cool like we yeah. we um like all this there's like one skinhead dude that would like put me on his shoulders and take me into the pit and it was like it was That's like cool. straight suburbia style it was fucking great so it seems like your parents were super uh supportive of of that even happening at such a young age where they, your parents were very open-minded. Yeah. I mean, supportive and, and tuned out, you know what I'm mm. saying? Like, you know, gotcha. like, like I think it's, it's a little, it's a little bit of, a little bit of both, you know, our house was definitely like shit was out of control. And, and I think that like basically anything that, that like anything that like occupied us and wasn't like uh, us getting in trouble was like, okay with them. Yeah. So did, did you, uh, so, you, did you do good in school? No, <laughs> no, I, 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 I was, I was a disaster in school. I mean, mm. I, I was like, I was about music and I was about shows and then I was about graffiti and then I was about, you know, I, I didn't finish high school. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I had a, I, I was, I had a, it was a, that was, that was kind of a dark a dark time. So you're you're a wild kid in the streets doing graffiti and stuff. Real it's, wild, yeah. And, and what and what and what, what, you, what got you into the graffiti world? How'd that happen? Just like honestly, like like the Safari Club flyers. <laughs> I was like, this shit <laughs> awesome. looks fucking awesome. Yeah. Holy. And shit. Uh, and yeah, and, and and then I just always tried to write like that, and then you know, and then and then I wasn't I wasn't that good, but like I. It's kind of like me, me as a musician in the sense that, like, I knew what was good and always surrounded, like, loved being around people that were talented. Always, I loved that. So I like kind of like found, kind of like roped people in and found, like, you know, just gravitated towards people that were super talented in music and art and everything. So, um, 
in in school you were like kind of like a troublemaker too did you get kicked out of school and stuff like that suspended were you yeah like, i got like like middle school <clears throat> i was like not a good student but i wasn't really like super out of control by the time time i got um like ninth grade was like really really bad like i would kicked out of multiple schools and my I ended up like in a in a psychiatric hospital for for a month and um wow. and then and then and then when i got out of there then i was like i mean the, the craziest thing that happened did i got out of the hospital and the only reason they let me out was because my insurance ran out oh wow and they recommended that i switch to this place Reich, which is like a long-term public almost like a juvie school like you 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 stay there during the week and you go home on the weekends yeah and um my uh there was a, like there was like a eight month wait list so when i got out of the hospital my parents were just like oh well we're gonna wait and you're just gonna sit at home and you know wait till that that um opportunity you know would till there's an availability and then my godmother who had had like a falling out with my parents mm. she got involved and said no you can't just like that's not acceptable. Like you can't have them just not go to school. Yeah. They either have to find a spot for them or, you know, whatever. So like provide in-home tutoring or they have to find a spot for him. He can't, it's like, he can't just sit at home. He's no. kind of like, so anyway, so what happened is she kind of like, like advocated for me. And finally I ended up back. Like the, there was like another school that was willing to let me come. And I actually got in, I was doing fine. Like I didn't know anybody. I kind of kept to myself. I listened to music. I showed up, I did my shit and I came home and I was actually doing pretty well. And then right, this was ninth grade. Like I, um, I, I had this band rise and we were doing really well. And, um, and then our bass player died. Holy shit. He got struck by lightning. Yeah. And it was like, it was like, it's one of the most traumatic things that's ever happened in my life. Cause he was like, we were super fucking close. And, and, um, and the, I'll tell you a real quick funny story of the, how I met him, which is, this is what's crazy. All these little webs. So during the time that I was like being a total fuck up, um, the drummer from damnation and the, he wasn't in damnation at the time, but we stole his parents' car. Oh shit! <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> and we're drive, we're driving, and uh, we get we get pulled over on Connecticut Avenue, like right right heading into DC. It's like eleven thirty at night, and um, and he had the presence of mind to tell the cop that he was his brother. So he oh, he fit the description. Yeah. He knew the address. He knew the date of birth. All that. The cop didn't totally believe him. So the cop said, "Look, I'm towing the car." I'm giving you a ticket and I'm leaving you guys here. So this shit's like, this shit's like 1991 maybe. Yeah. And, and, um, there's no cell phone, you no, know what I mean? Like, no. but like we're, so he's like, well, I know this kid, Noah. I, I know this kid, Noah, and he lives close to here. So we walked to Noah's house. We ring the doorbell at like midnight on a school night. And <laughs> his his parents, his parents come to the door and are like, what the fuck? And that's how, that's how I met Noah. And Damn. then that's, and through him is how I met Matt Squire, who would go, I would go on to do Ashes in Milltown and yeah. produce records with and do all that shit. But it's like so fucking funny how that's like, crazy. you know, you just get, you, you get pulled over <laughs> by the police <laughs> and the uh, closest friend's house. But actually, believe it or not, at that time, battery was already happening. All right, so like this battery. That, what year did that start? Battery started. Well, yeah. So okay, so this, this is this kind of ties in with what we were talking about before. So summer before sixth grade, when I'm going to all these shows, there was this like skinhead dude, Mike Mattingly. Okay. And he was super nice to me all the time. And then he said to me. Oh, where are you going to school? And I told him, and he was like, "Oh shit, my sister goes there. Is going there. Gotcha. You guys should hang out." So anyway, I start hanging out with this girl, and she's a seventh grader. I'm a sixth grader, and and we start dating, and then oh, I start hanging out at 
I start hanging out at her house after school and he plays drums in a band called Strength in Numbers and the guitar player for the band was Ken Oldham. Oh, wow. Yeah. (laughs) So, so what happened was I just went to all their band practices and, Mm -hmm. and like, and, and then what happened was when the show started happening at the Safari Club, well, Ken started driving me home after their band practice. Okay. And when the Safari Club started doing shows, our house was kind of on the way. And he started picking us up and taking us to those shows. Gotcha. And at some point during that time, he, he said to me, oh, I'm doing a straight edge band too. And if you ever want to come watch us practice, like I'll pick you up after school. <laughs> it's like kind of weird so fucking when crazy. you look, think think of, <laughs> think about it now. But he would pick me up on Fridays after school, yeah. and we would I would go stay at his house when I was in seventh grade, and I would watch them write songs. And at the end of practice, they didn't have a singer, so at the end of practice, they'd play covers, and I would sing. Oh, shit. and then then I started singing over their shit, and so then. They could never find a singer. Finally, at the end of eighth grade for me, they booked time with, to record a demo so they could get a singer. While we're in the studio, I, my brother and I both went with them. Yeah. And I'm telling the, the engineer, this guy Barrett Jones, I think it was actually, and Barrett Jones lived with Dave Grohl at the time. Oh, wow. Barrett Jones was like the sound man for Scream and produced the first Foo Fighters record. So he is recording this demo and he's saying to me, who's saying so I was like, well, I sing at practice, but they're, they're going to get a real singer. <laughs> and then, so he says to me, just go out there and do it. And then I'll run it off for him without vocals and with yours. And I went and did it. And it was like, it, it really came out. It came out really well. Oh, and, and I started, started, I gave Sarge at the Swari club, the demo, and he put us on a sick of it all show. Wow. And man. I was, that was it. And so- but then, <laughs> Then I, then they thought, I think then I lost my mind. And that's when I was like really super depressed, getting in fights, getting in trouble, like way out of control. And then when I was in the hospital, they started doing Worlds Collide and Battery just kind of fell apart. And so we we really didn't do much in that early phase. What grade were you in when you went to the hospital? Uh, Ninth grade. And so, <clears throat> I mean, were you were you partying at the time too? Like, were you, were you doing drugs? No, I was straight. I was straight edge. Fucking wow. thank God, I was straight edge. Holy wow. fuck! Yeah, it was it was crazy. Actually, it's so funny because I didn't really know a lot about straight edge. But I'll never forget. We we're like taking. <laughs> I was with a bunch of my friends, and we're we're taking the 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 metro home from the Gorilla Biscuit show at the Safari Club. That first, I was first there. Time they came down. I was there with him. Yep. Yeah, I remember. Wow. And and and. uh Remember, they showed up super late. Yes, we did. Yep. And and we're on the train, and like I, I said to my friend, like, what do you think about being straight edge? He's like, yeah, that, I think that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. And I was straight edge. It was. It was and Fuck. oh my god, thank God. I mean, if you fucking took me getting arrested and and running around with these like psycho people, <laughs> added like drugs and alcohol. I mean, it would have been. It would have been so bad. I mean, I'm. That was like the best fucking thing that ever happened to me. It saved your life in a sense, yeah, right. Kind totally of. saved my life, one hundred percent. Like well, without without hesitation, the best, the most monumental thing in my life was becoming a straight edge. Was it your choice to go seek help? Was your parents trying to make you do that? Is it something that you thought you needed to go to go see what to go to the hospital? Was that your choice? Oh no, that was, I mean, I, I will tell you this most, it was, it's a really like awful story. So I know I feel bad for my parents because they, I think they really just didn't know what to do, mm. but I was like out of control. Like I wasn't coming home for days at a time, you know, like running with some like pretty like crazy. No, they do. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and then, and, and, um, and then, so I kept like saying to my mom, like, there are people like me at schools that are doing fine. Like I had friends yeah. that were in like private schools and that were like, like my school was like, you know, my brother went there and people kind of like, I don't want to say like teased him, but like kind of like, you know, it's like a jock rich yeah. kind of like, fuck yeah. those people. I mean, I just wanted to fucking kill everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, 
So you're protecting I mean, your older anyway, brother. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not protecting, but just like, you know, like his response to it was to just like be above it and fucking yeah. ignore it. And my response was to want to like fight everybody. So yeah, 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 yeah. Mom, I, there was like a, some sort of incident and, and, and my mom took me to this doc, this search, like emergency counseling session. And I've been to like all these doctors for, since I was a little kid. And I like got really upset and stormed out. And the lady convinced my mom I needed to go to the hospital. Mm. But what they did was instead of like talking to me about it, which I probably would have run away. Yeah. My mom told me, oh, we're going to this hospital so we can get you tested so you could go to a school where you're going to be like, it's more fitting to you. So we show up at Shady Grove Hospital and we're like walking and everything's fine and I'm in a great mood and we fucking walk through this door uh, and then my mom doesn't come through. Are you fucking And they like close it behind me. Yeah. And, and, and how it, old are you at this point? That's, I was 13. That's 14, fucking 14. heavy, dude. Yeah, it was real heavy. And and, and the, the place has since been shut down because it was I, – I was on a fucking ward with adults. Holy like, shit. It it was it was very it was very fucked up. Were you just a yeah? Rebel- so were you, were the just thing re- that breaks. Go ahead, keep going. Go ahead. The thing that breaks my heart about it is like to this day, my mom is still, like, if it comes up, she like is in tears. Like, I mean, mm. it was just she got bad advice. She didn't know what to do. Yeah. Globally, it was it was it was awful, and then. Like the thing I think that was like hardest for my parents just didn't know what to do ever. Like, yeah, yeah. Like they were embarrassed, so they didn't tell anybody. So like, I literally like I didn't have visitors the entire. Like nobody, nobody came to see me. One time, my brother came to see me, and his car broke down or something. But I was there just alone for how long? It was like for a month. Damn, man. And, and that young a month is a fucking long time, man. That's that's Oh like... my god, especially when you're, you know, you're fucking 14. I mean, and, think about that. 2 years younger than Max, you know. Yeah, it's, like it's fucking crazy. crazy. And were you and, and what do you think it was? You were you just a rebellious kid like you you always like yeah, that? Yeah, I was like ang- I was just super angry. There was a lot of like I I had depression since I was like really young, but then my my um my um my parents had like a. My dad has like pretty severe obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, okay. and then my mom. My mom has had like severe depression, and she's very like. Gotcha. They had just a fucking awful relationship, and there was a lot of fighting, and mm. my brother and I fought a lot, and it was just, it was like not a happy. It was it toxic happy in the house. <laughs> so that's why you never. There. Yeah, and and then yeah. and then and then I was a like I didn't have anything at that time to like you know, sink my teeth into. It's so funny yeah. now because you meet, like, ban, if I tell Ben some of this stuff that we're like, I'm in the studio, I'm like the opposite. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. could you imagine me having like an explosive temper, you know? It's like, <laughs> I just needed something to like love. And, and, mm-hmm. and I, up, in, up until that point, I literally felt like I'm not, good at, I was never good at sports. I was never like, cool, like, you know, like school was tough for me. My yeah. house, like, uh, my house was fucking wreck. My dad would like photocopy everything a thousand times and like leave notes, all, like, and rather than talk to us, like, like wow. I would uh, do. Brian, you there? Brian, I lost you. He would put a note on the wall that says, "Do not write on wall." <laughs> Oh, because you were you were doing like, you were tagging in your house, right? Yeah, I was tagging in my house, wow. and then I was stealing their car. All I was stealing, and instead of like doing anything about it, they put like a chain and a fucking padlock on it. <laughs> Holy fuck! So there's really no communication there, just notes and shit. Nothing. Wow, man. Just like just crazy, just crazy shit. Yeah. <sighs> so and then I was like not coming home. You know what I mean? So yeah, I like. I mean, it's it's really hard for me as a parent to ever imagine letting things get that bad. Yeah. But they just had a they had an awful relationship, and 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 the funny thing is they're they're, I mean, they they're doing pretty well now. Oh, they're still I mean, together. They're still together, which is wow. They're man. still together, which is crazy. Holy shit! And my younger brother kind of got spared, and like I kind of 
Mike and I kind of raised him, you know, mm. like, like, like a pack, you know, wolves. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy so that like anyway, you still were so. straight edge and like, it's, it's amazing, man, through all that. Cause that's easy. People can just go oh, the path of like, I'm gonna get fucked up. Fuck my parents and all this shit. Like, well, the thing that, well, that's the beauty of straight edge, right? Yeah. Like, like I was a fucking rebel and that felt like the most rebellious thing. Cause yeah. I didn't like fucking jocks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I didn't like, and then the punk thing was just like, like it was too like not personal, mm-hmm. you know, to me, yeah. like, like hardcore spoke to my soul. Yeah. Like, like, like the, I would leave, I would literally read like seven seconds and fucking youth today. And those GB, like literally read those lyrics over and over again. Yeah. It was like a religion. Like a man. I mean, it was like, yeah. Yeah, and it and it felt like me. And looking, going to shows, I literally was like, "That's what these guys look like me." You know what I mean? These guys, like, mm-hmm. you know, I mean. So anyway, hardcore was like the thing that I like, and it was also the thing where people are like, "Oh, you're good at this." Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'd never been good at anything. I never, I never felt like like I never thought for a second in my life that I would amount to anything. Up until I was doing music, and then it was like, "Hey, I wrote this," and people were like, "I want to come and like watch you play that. <laughs> yeah. I want to tape it for my friends and tell them about it." I mean, it was like it gave me something that I could, um, you know, sink my te- teeth into, yeah. and, and like, so yeah. So that shit was that shit was wild. So when you came back, when you came back from the hospital, you went back to school. I went back to school, and then, and then be Noah grade, died. Maybe? Oh, then he died. That's right. Well, this was ninth year. grade. So okay. then at the end of ninth grade, Noah died. Damn. And then they, they decided to send me to this school for like, like kids with like emotional difficulties because okay. I had been doing better and they put me there and I did totally fine. Yeah. And so then they transferred me out of that back to like Gen Pop at my original school Gen Pop, yeah. that I had gotten kicked out of. And I got in like, a fight like the first day oh, shit. and the principal called me to the office and, and he called my mom and they, they were like, you can't stay here. And they called the other school I had been at the year before. And that dude said, well, he was fine here. He can come back. Oh, that's cool. Totally. So then, so then I went there and I really didn't get in a lot of trouble at school moving forward. Yeah. I just skipped school. Like my mom would drop me off and I would like, kind of walk towards school and then go hang out at McDonald's with the security guard. Oh my God. That's crazy. <laughs> were, you, were, you, were, yeah. you, were you a skater back then too? Did you skate? No, I wasn't. Well, I thought I was really good. I mean, it's funny how this is like, like one of the reasons I gave up on skating is I didn't have any friends that were good. Mm. So it was like, I never got really good. And once I realized like, wow, I suck. Like, <laughs> you know, it's funny how like, like, W- w- your peers set the bar, right? Yeah. So it's like you. I had never even seen anybody that was good. It was kind of like the opposite. Like for me with music, like Matt Squire and Ken were my musical peers, and they're still to this day like two of the most talented people I've ever come across. Yeah, and I've done this. And so what? I, the bar for me, music wise, was fucking endless. You know? Yeah. So. No, so I, I I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't much of a skater. Um, I um, some of my friends were, but but not not not. So nobody we good, so nobody inspired around. each other to be better because none of you guys could skate in the first place. So right, was, <laughs> right, right. And then I was like, I'm so far from being good enough to like care, like um, yeah, you know. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> so you you dropped out of high school at seventeen. Yeah. So so then, well, this is pretty funny. Like so, then we were doing. After Noah died, we we formed Ashes, which was Rise, the band I've been doing, yep. minus Noah, and and then Rock, and then Ashes was doing really well, and Ken was doing World Collide, and I was like a total fuck up in school and didn't wasn't doing that well. So one day I walked into a record store and literally like like this dates it, but I don't even know that I owned a CD player at this time. And I saw a battery CD and I was like, what oh, the shit. fuck is this? And I pull it down and it's, it's the fucking demo and seven inch we did when I was in eighth grade. Holy shit. And it's on a CD and it's on lost and found. Oh shit. 
Lost and, and found. I was like, what the, what the fuck is this? And so I, this is the craziest thing. Up until like two years ago, everybody told me it was a bootleg. Which, which I would think what, actually it wasn't. What actually happened was they reached out to my brother and Ken to put out the world's collide. And my brother, I guess, sent them the battery too. He said, can I put this out? And they said, go ahead and put it out. Oh, and so, shit. so Ken and I weren't really that close at that time. I was super focused on ashes, mm-hmm. but lost and found and said, like, people love this here. If you guys ever wanted to do another record, like we would put it out and we would bring you over. So Ken and I talked about doing a record and that was only the Die Hard Remain. Yeah. I was 17 and we decided to, I went to my school counselor and she was basically like, you know, there's no reason to like, you should do that. But, wow. You know, you, there's no point. You don't want to miss that to be. Um, yeah. And by that time I had really like, I had pulled things together and I was dating my wife now. Yep. Um, we started dating in, in 94, um, 93, uh, right around, I, like we were together right when battery went to record our first full length and yeah. funny, real funny, funny story. The first time she ever came to my house, the house was being raided by the police oh, shit. for graffiti. Holy <laughs> shit. You have to have her tell you the story of that. <laughs> we drive and they're like 30 cop cars. Holy and, shit. And, um, and I was like, oh my God, like, duck, like, get the fuck out of here. And um, I really hadn't been doing graffiti in a long, for a while at that point. But yeah. this crew that I had started with some guys yeah. really had taken over. And because I had started it, they kind of had it out for me. So mm. I, uh, so anyway, yeah. So what was your graffiti so, name? So yeah, oh, it was rage. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, but the funny thing is all these guys that I was like running with a lot of them, like, do you know Roger Gassman? Yeah, man. Yeah. Beyond so Roger streets. and I went to high school together and, and I got him into graffiti. You got him into graffiti. Like the fucking Holy world shit. Aficionado on graffiti. Wow. Holy yeah. shit. So he Roger was like Roger was like um the uh, Ashes Roadie. So like he we, his dad had passed away and he had a car but he didn't have a driver's license yet. So his mom <laughs> would let me take the car and that's how we got to all the Ashes shows. Holy shit. Beyond, yeah. Now he's got so anyway, beyond yeah. The so a lot of those kids I was I was doing graffiti with were like legit good and legit smart, and uh, it was it was pretty funny. So what what year did Ashes start? Ashes started in 91, 90, 91, 92. So you, you had done the battery demo, and then you all the other stuff happened. Then you did the Ashes, and then you came back to. Then I did Ashes, yeah. yeah. And Ashes was like my main my main focus, and. Um, and, um, and then, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then we did battery, but battery like literally was like, it was like kind of a side project for, for everybody. I mean, after yeah. was my focus at that point and world Clyde and damnation were Ken's, were Ken's focus. And then, and then everybody in ashes what got into co- like got into college, like in the Northeast. So like Matt Squire was going to, Boston, uh, Boston University, and Elena was going to Brown, and Jack was going to NYU. So wow. I decided to move to Boston. Yeah, and we were going to try and keep the band going. So then, like, like I had this fucking harebrained idea. Where I, this is the the in Ashes and Battery. I was never the recording guy. Okay, it was always Ken and Matt. Gotcha. And Ashes went to record the last two songs we ever recorded. And Matt had to leave. And so okay. I was like the default dude. Mm-hmm. And like that was the first time I ever sat behind a console and was like, holy shit, this is what I want. This is what I want to do with my life. So I ended up like borrowing some money from people and Matt had a bunch of gear and I bought enough stuff to do a studio. And I moved, when I moved to Boston, I lived 
in a house with um, Sweet Pea. Nice. And Trey, Trey from Death Wish and Pete from Mouthpiece and Ben from Ten Yard Fight. And I set the first incarnation of Salad Days up in the basement of that house. And what year would that be? And it was, that was, um, that was 94. 94, okay. And, and I literally was like, did, didn't have any clients. You know, I didn't have anything going on. And I put flyers all over town and nobody ever called. And I ended up, I was like, wow, this is going to be a fucking disaster. Like, I'm <laughs> in all this debt. Yeah. Nobody's recording with me. And then one day, do you know Rama Mayo? Hmm. He, ha- he did Big Wheel Recreation. Maybe, maybe. Boston label. Well, anyway, one day he, he, he stopped by the house and was like, oh, you guys have a studio here. I have this band that wants to do a demo. And that was Cast Iron Hike. I don't know if you remember that yeah, band. Y- yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, and so like, so I recorded them, and then they were like pretty like well known. Yeah, they were um, respected um, dudes in Boston, and then people started. So I literally went the first two months I was in Boston. I didn't record, literally did not record one band. After I recorded them, within that the rest of that year, I recorded, see, Converge, Cave In, in yep. One Hundred Eight, yep. Texas is the reason. Like, like it just like piebald. It just fucking exploded. I mean, it was crazy. Ducky boys. How? Yeah, ducky boys. Yeah, like blood for blood. I mean, just, yeah. I'm looking at the was, list right now. Reach was, the sky. Fucking snapcase. Fucking hot water music explosion. Yep. Thrice movie life. Um, yep. Dude, this uh, Jersey strike anywhere. Bane circus survive. Senses fail. Autumn to ashes. The Bled, Set Your Goals, Fireworks, Fury, Angel Dust, Turnstile, Diamond Youth. It's fucking crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, so so that's it was it was crazy, man. And 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 then and then we started doing this was like at that time. Remember when like every band was getting signed to a major label? Yeah. Yeah. And we um I started doing did you ever meet Jonah from Only Living Witness? Yes, I have, for sure. Sure. Okay, so I started. Matt Squire and I started doing this band Milltown with Jonah from yep. Only Living Witness. We recorded the demo, and then like Orange Nine Millimeter was coming to play in Boston, and I just had this feeling like I, maybe Mike Gitter will be there. Mm. So I give my roommate the demo. I'm like, hey, if Mike Gitter happens to be there, give this to him. Awesome. And I'd never even met him. I just knew of him. Yeah. And the next day, my phone rings, and it's Mike Gitter. And it's like, hey, I got this demo from your your roommate. (laughs) And so anyway, (laughs) then it was like our next show had like all these major label dudes at it. And then we signed to a subsidiary of Warner Warner Brothers Brothers, when I was 19. Damn. And and then that shit was a fucking disaster. We broke up. In this, we went with like the worst possible producer you could ever imagine. Oh, man. You had the like kind of weird major label totally experience. Totally. Like, dude had no fucking idea what we were going for. Yep. The demos were great. He just watered it all down, and yep. we ended up the, the record fell apart. And then we were gonna go back and and start over with another producer, but the the, the uh, without getting into too much of the nitty gritty the. We and there ended up being like a physical altercation in the rehearsal space, and literally yeah. like most of the dudes, like some of those dudes, like we never talked again for like almost twenty years. Okay. So, and, and but we the, just played. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we just I, played I know. It's crazy. Three weeks ago with Kevin, and it was fucking sweet. And I saw that's amazing. So, so how long did that band last for? Like like a year. Okay. <laughs> like a year and a half maybe. Wow. And then and then I was like f- like fuck it. I have no reason to be in Boston. Yep. And and at the time Battery was doing pretty well and I was thinking, "Oh, I'll move back to DC and um, you know, f- start the studio there." But you you were kind of responsible for the end of Battery because because um you called me and you wanted us to play. What record was it? It was a record. Stick in the water in '97. Show and, yep. So you called me and said, "Like, hey, can you guys play?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And the battery was big in DC, so it was like announced and flyers and yeah. all the shit. And and I didn't want to let you down. Thank and 
one day I get this call from Ken in the middle of the night and he leaves me a message being like, dude, you know, better than a thousands tour. Got, I think I don't remember the exact got yeah. moved up. And unfortunately we're going to have to cancel the H2O show. And I was like, Oh, that's a bummer. And then I called the, the, the dude, the bass player from better than a thousand. And he was like, dude, what are you talking about? That shit happened six weeks ago. Oh, wow. And I was like, you know what? <sighs> Fuck that. Damn. <laughs> um, we're going to, we're going to play anyway. So we played that show with you guys was without Ken and without Graham and we'll put some, some scabs. And that was, that was it for battery. Holy shit. So then you never talked really after that for a while. So we didn't, we had, you know, we would see each other a little bit, but we, 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 we really didn't talk for up until even, even, even when we did the, um, even when we did the, um, the first Rev 25, like Ken and I didn't really communicate a lot. We have a loaded relationship because yeah. I think like, you know, you know how when we met, I was fucking 12 and he was like 17 year old, like accomplished musician yeah. writing awesome songs. And I was like, definitely a hanger on like, mm -hmm. and I like idolized him, you know, yeah. with good reason. Totally. By the end of the band, I was fairly accomplished myself. Yeah. And our 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 relationship never like we're always friends, but it never kind of like like leveled out. It's kind yeah. of like you know it's it's like it was never like I don't think I think I think he never quite like I think he always kind of saw I, I felt like he always kind of saw me as that little kid, mm -hmm. and by that point. Milltown, Ashes, the studio. I mean, I, 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 you're, you're doing I had great. been doing some pretty, you're established. pretty good shit. And, yeah. I, and, and, and I felt like, and, and unfairly, I think that I was resentful and never like, you know, in Ken's defense, I would never said to him, yo, dude, <laughs> yeah, we got to figure this out. No, it totally. just was like, and not, and not healthy. Um, but actually like when we decided to do the, 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 the go to Europe again with battery, I decided, you know what, if we're going to do this, we got to fucking, we got to talk it out. So totally. we went and had coffee and sat, sat and talked for like a long time, got everything out there awesome. and got together with like all the kids and the wives and shit. It's like real, you know, positive now. So when you, so when you move back to DC, like that's when the producing really took off for you. And you yeah. So, and... yeah. So at first I, 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 I had I had some business partners in Boston and that didn't end well. It ended um and so kinda when I came back to Baltimore, I mean, I went from like fucking Milltown and battery and the studio, like every fucking thing in the world was like going right. Yeah. And over the course of like three months, all of it ended. Like all of it. Yeah. And and I'm like back living in the basement at my parents' house wow. and I'm like, what the fuck? And so I decided like, I'm just going to get a house with some friends again. Mm -hmm. And I set up my little studio in the, in the control room with the dining room and the drums went in a little room in the basement and just like super DIY and just started grinding, man, you know, like yeah. recording bands every day of the week and, and just totally kind of, built it back up. And I mean, in that little house that we did the movie life record, Sick. we did cave in Jupiter. We did, I mean, reach sky pie Vault, like lots of, lots of cool shit. And then that's, I saved up money and that's when I bought, um, my first, I bought a house and then built like a real proper building behind it with a studio. And then awesome. I really lucked out again with that because it was like, not, remember that place, St. Andrew's yep. Church, where, so yeah. I was finishing building the studio and Hot Water Music was playing at St. Andrew's and I talked to Jason Black and he was like, oh, we'll swing by the house. And they came by and saw the studio and we're like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. We just signed to Epitaph, like maybe we should do our record here. And that was really big for That's me. Awesome. Hot Water was like, they were like one of my favorite bands. And they were also, every band up until that point, I had gotten involved with as at their demo, you yeah. know, and then their seven inch and then their full length. Yeah. Hot Water was the first like established band that I didn't like develop that mm -hmm. came to me. And I think that like when, when they did that, um, that, 
that was big in, in terms of like the perception of other bands being like, Oh, we could go to McTurn, you yeah. know? And, and I was, I mean, I was like 23 or 24 then. That's crazy. And I think like, yeah, I think like that now there's so many young dudes that are like recording, but back then that wasn't a thing. I mean, there weren't like a bunch of young producers with their own studio. Like, like you know, bands were having to go to the studio and play. Oh, I want this kind of drum sound. I want this kind of guitar sound. Yeah. We're like, I knew exactly what they were influenced by and knew exactly what they were wanted. And yeah. I think there was like a comfort level. The other thing was like, because I didn't like at first, I really didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Mm -hmm. So one thing I realized early on was like, you know what? I don't have all this shit, but good songs sound better. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> I, I started really early on really working with bands on like arrangements and, and like, performance and the songs and the lyrics and things like that yeah. because that was something I could control when I didn't have tons of gear. Yeah. And so I think like now it's real normal for like, there are a lot of people that are like doing pre-production and doing like hardcore work on the songs before you even hit record. But yeah. back then there weren't. And there were like Don Z and Tara, but you just kind of go in set up and he hits record. Yeah. So I, I think that it was like, it was kind of an exciting time and we were, um, and that Beltville house, I mean, that, that, that's where I did like, you know, Circus Survive and Bane Give Blood and yeah. hot, two, three Hot Water Music records and all sorts of shit. And then, Damn. and then, um, it was kind of a crazy thing because Matt Squire had been in Milltown with me yep. and he, after Milltown was really not doing anything, but he's super fucking talented. So I convinced him to move to DC and help me in the studio and so he was like assisting me on projects and then he set up his own studio. And then like the second or third record he ever did was panic at the disco. Holy shit. At his own new spot. right? And, wow. And that, and that shit like blew up. So Holy he shit. ended up buying that studio from me. Okay. And I ended up buying a building up in Baltimore and moved. So Matt is still has that. That's still like a functioning. Oh, wow. That's still a functioning studio. He's still there. So what? What, what would be like your biggest? I want to see biggest. Well, I guess record that like you're like holy shit! I, I produced this record and now it's it's selling this many copies and or, or even did you? I mean, I think I think the the the, the biggest the 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 biggest. I would say probably like Thrice was really like okay. the most ex exhilarating ride. Only yeah. because like when they first came in, it was like there are the fucking nicest dudes you you're ever going to meet yeah. too. And the, but they were like young kids. I mean, they were like, yeah. had never been to the East coast and like, and, and, and we did the record and it was like, I mean, it was like, you know, the budget was like $6,000 or something. Yeah. It was like nothing. nothing. And, and, and like, and like, I, I just remember they were like, so they were like one of the first bands that I had ever worked with. That was like really into like their core craft of yeah. play, like being musicians yeah. now there's tons of bands like that but, but i remember the first day coming down and they had like modern bass player and guitar player and like shit like that i'd never seen a band which care about being like good good yeah and um but that was like a that was an that was a really awesome thing because they not only did that record the first record i did with them blow up but that they still wanted me, they wanted me to be involved in their major label record. That's really awesome. So they got signed, they got signed to Island and I also then did their second record, the artist in the ambulance. And like, we, and it was cool. Like we did, you know, I mean, you know, it was like fucking cool as shit. So like, like I actually don't really care that much about like the commercial success. Yeah. Most of what I like isn't super popular in that yeah. way, but to have a record come out and have it be like, you know, 50,000 copies scanned the first week or whatever Sick. the fuck it was, was pretty like exciting. And yeah. then when I like think, when I think about like my life as like a fucking kid in a hospital, like with like nothing, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like feeling like I don't have anything in the world. I'm not good at anything. I have no hope for my life in any way to like, wow, I toured the world and, and like a hardcore band and, just produce a record that like people are like running to the stores, but like it was a pretty like, you know, that was one of the first times I was like, wow, this is like for real. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, 
this is happening. And, 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 and I'm fortunate because like, you know, my, my wife, like at that point in time, we lived in the house where the bands also lived. Okay. And most of us were kind of the same age. So we just were, were so close with the bands. Yeah. And it's like so invested. It wasn't at all like, okay, where's my check? <laughs> where's yeah. my, we were like, they were like, you know, we, 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 that was our lives. We didn't have kids. We had mm-hmm. dogs and we had the bands and that was, yeah. that was it. So and that was a, that was a pretty exciting exciting ride and then those dudes i mean the reason i say them and 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 circus survived too it's like both of those bands came to me and really like it hadn't started so i i like circus survived had never played a show and thrice was just like you know a small west coast band had never left the west coast getting to now go see them and see them still drawing Telling so it. many people and yeah. have people still care so much. It's just so it, you just feel like lucky to have been around to watch it all. Yeah. That's amazing, man. So, yeah. So, I mean, then there's like, you know, other things have done really well and like, you know, but, but just being involved at that inception, like that was just so um, exciting to watch. Yeah. So, so at that point you're a producer and that's your career. You're not, you're not doing really any music at that point. Right. It's a straight producer. Right. Right. For how many yep. how many years straight did that go before you missed like playing music? Um, and writing let's see. Well, so I had a pretty wild ride. Like I had like a, a little like label deal with Atlantic and a, awesome doing some shit like that. And so basically from '97 up until oh gosh, I want to say maybe 2013. Damn, that was the that was like all. That was it. That was all I did, and I, um, I, and it was, and it was awesome. But I got, you know, that, that I had like, I, I, I got to be a, with it through kind of the peak, peak. Yeah. But then, all of a sudden, they stopped paying me, mm-hmm. and and budgets got really tight, and I got, you know, the, just the culture of like kind of the way records are made has changed yep. a lot. Like, yeah because you can fix everything bands are coming in less and less prepared. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is like, I mean, any band that has like any sort of like hardcore roots, I almost never have an issue with some of the bands that are just like totally like from another world. Yeah. And I was getting older and the bands were getting younger. It was, it, some of them got harder. And then I, my daughter was born and I just kind of, I got to a place where I was like, I'm not that happy doing this yeah. anymore. And I felt like I needed a break. Yeah. So in 2000, the first thing I did was I sold the building that where the studio was in, in 2012. Yeah. And I got a smaller space with less overhead and thought, Oh, maybe it's the stress. Mm. And, 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 but I was still, I, the funny thing is I had a couple records that year that were like that year between when I f- took an official break and when I sold the building. I mean, that, that year I did that angel dust, yep. the fireworks and turnstile and like all three of those bands, those records and those people, I mean, top tier everything. I mean, yeah, I fucking yeah, love, I love all it. those people yeah. so much, but I had a couple in there as well that made me feel like I never want to do. <laughs> and so anyway, I end, I ended up, I ended up le- deciding to take a kind of a leave of absence. Yeah, and right. I, and I, and I, I, um, and I, and I left and I got, I, I got a job at first being like a project manager for a construction company because the one little side twist to all this is I always built my own studios and, renovated houses and did shit like that. So I was super interested in how'd you learn that, that kind of what stuff. Got, what and got then, you into that? How'd you do that? Start doing that. Uh, well, because like when I was like 19 and you want to have a studio and you don't have any money, like mm. you just build it. You know? DIY, and yeah. then, yeah. And then, and then, and then, and then, um, and then we would like, what we ended up in Baltimore because my wife was like, Baltimore's cheap as shit. Like, mm-hmm. You know, and and so we bought a place up here that we were gonna just like sell, and yep. so we're c- coming up here and fixing it up, and then we ended up loving Baltimore and sold the 
other place and stayed up here. But anyway, I got into like some construction type stuff. And then because, you know, that fucking hardcore kid, like, you know, I mean, like, you know, like when I was like 15, I'm booking tour. So it's crazy. Um, yeah. it, you're to be a successful, like, person in the park where you kind of have to be a little bit of a serial entrepreneur mm-hmm. and and um so like i go into this place i've never had a real job in my entire life and like <laughs> within six months i'm the coo and they have me like managing like all the like other people and that's amazing that was pretty fun the, the thing is i'm glad i did it and and i kind of like, proved to myself that um i could and then I also kind of proved to myself that I'm a fucking hardcore kid and I'm a musician and yeah. <laughs> I don't really, I can't, I can't, I can't really do that. And yeah. the other thing was I was making a shitload of money and I also realized that didn't make me happy. Mm. And like if my phone's blowing up at two o'clock in the morning and it's a text from Toby, that <laughs> makes me happy. When it's a text from some asshole that like, trying to buy something i want to just like shoot myself so yeah. <laughs> yeah. so anyway <laughs> that's am- that's I, uh, amazing you can drive honest- you can drive in the real world and like be like a- almost a normal person for and you can actually do at least you know you can do that and you have that skill that's amazing i think but well i mean i could i couldn't so like 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 the the flip side of it is i was fucking miserable okay like, i mean it brought me it brought me zero joy. Mm. I hated the people I was working with. I was putting the same kind of emotion and energy into it that I had put into bands and all of, yeah. you know, but at the end of the day, it's like, it was super, wasn't interesting. And it was like, whatever. And I was super, super miserable. And I was drinking too much. And mm. I was like tuned out from my, from my life. And I would just get home and just like, want to be numb. And wow. what really, what really happened was we decided to do this little run of battery things. And it's yeah. funny how, cause I'm not straight edge now, but it's funny how like hardcore, I feel like saved my life again in that yeah. I wasn't even fully aware of how miserable I was. I just was like numb to life. And yeah. when we started having the battery thing, we're planning, Oh, we're becoming a petition to find all of a sudden I'm like, Oh my God, this is what it feels like to have something to care about. Yeah. Like, this is what it feels like to have something to look forward to and to like have a reason to be talking to all these people that I miss so much. Yeah. And, um, and we did it and it was fucking great, man. And it was like, and, you know, the shows were awesome and it was like reconnected with people that we hadn't seen forever. And I just kind of like, reconnected with like a part of myself that I had like really put on hold. Yeah. What year um, was that? What year? That was 2016 maybe. Okay. I want to say 2017 maybe. So. And how long, yeah, how, so, long, how, so, long how long had it been since you guys played together? We hadn't really put, we did the rev 25, That's but it had yeah. been like, Eight, 18 years wow. and we did a song we did it we, we had done, we did a new song and it was like wow i just like and i fucking miss just like having shit to drive around in the car and listen to and light lyrics and yeah like I, that's all i had known my whole life and 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 even the producing i had really put like my own feelings and my own kind of things that i needed to get out on the back burner yeah for a really really long time and um so yeah, so I mean that, that we did we did that and it was super fucking awesome. And then we, we we really had the intention to try and make a battery record. Yeah. <laughs> and um, these are the days, and, right? That was a and, song, right? Two thousand. No, that that's an old that's an old song. What, the, what was the, the, what's um, the new one? It was called, we we didn't play it on the tour. It's called My Last Breath. I'll find oh, it to you fuck. later. It's a, it's a it's a really cool, it's a cool song. Okay. Um, no, I heard. I pretty but, much I heard. But, but, I, I remember Daniel the Swede's like, "Yo, check out the new battery. It's fucking awesome." I remember hearing it was awesome. It was just like, it was like you guys never, never yeah. even left. Yeah. Yeah, and it was cool. And the, but but then what happened was when we when we tried to write, we had we we, we like couldn't get you know mm. on the same page. And you you know like 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 what I you're you sing so you know like the, like you need to feel it or totally. you don't. Yeah, I can't fake you it. You know, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and, and, and what, what ultimately happened was 
Ken wrote a bunch of stuff that I kind of was like, you know, some of it I liked, some of it I didn't. And then I wrote a bunch of stuff that and he didn't like any of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> which was fine because you yeah, know what? The, the, the thing is, it's just better. It's like the world doesn't need a record that's – there's plenty of awesome shit. So totally. if you're not going to make awesome shit, just don't make it. Yeah. I mean, it's not like – I don't want to like do music – just to have something to do. I want to do music because like, like, that's how like the only way I can like really feel and communicate and be in the world. And, and, and when you're not feeling it, it's just like, could I put words over it? Yeah. But am I inspired? Do I want to like leave my family and lose money to go do this? No. It's, and um, yeah. it's, 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 it was, it was great because I mean, we can still do battery and we could, you know, we can do things like, we fucking toured with you this summer. It was one of the best experiences of my life. But thank you. We did, it, it, there doesn't need to be a, a new battery record unless it's going to be heartfelt and made with love. You know. Yeah. Is, is, is it weird coming back as as being a producer and writer and helping people with song structure and melodies and lyrics to come back and write a new battery song? Was it easier for you? Like the one you well, guys released. I mean, so so with battery, I mean, it was it was a little bit harder. Mm. Because, like, when I, a lot of what I do with bands is, like, play, like, help move the chords around and, yeah. like, figure out the, like, you know, like, but, like, I write, I write, a, like, a hardcore and a punk song more, like, as a, as a bass for the vocals rather than, like, a riff. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. So, like, what I really need to come up with vocals that I feel, like, really good about is movement and, like, where I'm like, like, like a lot of hardcore is like definitely the way Ken writes battery stuff is more like a straight box kind of like it doesn't yeah. it doesn't it it was hard for me to to at with where my head is songwriting mm. wise to get back there and yeah. I wasn't you know I so yeah um and so now fast forward to be well your newer band, which is awesome. And you, and you played your first show with us in, um, in DC. Yes. Um, how's that yes. feel? How's it feel writing new songs and playing with a new band now in 2019? It feels great. Yeah. It's so awesome. It's like, I'm, I mean, I don't want to say like, I don't want to say like, I'm proud of myself. Cause that sounds like kind of a weird, <laughs> a weird thing to say, but, but, but like, I remember like, I'm like sitting on the plane coming back from Europe. Yep. And I was like, fuck man, I really miss this. Yep. And I also feel like we can't keep doing like, like what I need to do creatively. Isn't this. And like balancing that, like, would it be way easier if, that it was in battery record rather than a be well record. Like these are the built in yeah. audience. We get on tours. It's, you know, whatever you're not starting over, yeah. but it, it just wasn't where I was at. And then kind of like, 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 I mean, I, like when I was doing ashes in Milltown, I have Matt Squire was like my safety blanket. Here's yep. this like fucking super brilliant teammate. Yep. And then, and then Ken, you know, so it was yeah. kind of like at the beginning, it's just me. And like Mike Seibom was helping me, but, but yep. like, I just decided that it was something I needed to do and I, for a lot of reasons and I just didn't give up on it. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden I just kept writing and kept writing and kept writing. And then slowly one day I was like, holy shit, this is, this is a lot of songs and like yeah. started sending it to people and we, we just lucked out because Aaron from Bain, Aaron Dahlbeck who's like, yeah. I mean, you know, I recorded him and Converge and Bane. Like, we go way back. Yeah. Moved to Maryland. He's awesome. And then Mike Slybomb, Darkest Hour, is doing a little bit less since he was available. Metal Mike. And then a couple of the guys from Fair. Yep, Metal Mike. <laughs> and and all of a sudden, it's like, it's like I have these awesome dudes that all love it. And, you know, and then awesome dudes like you popping us on that show. And then it's, um now it's, you know, we're, it's probably, I, I don't EDR is going to put the record out. That's um, awesome, man. Super psyched, super psyched about. We just, um, it, we just, we're finishing the layout now and it's just been, it's cool. And I'm, 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 it's a very, very, very personal record. And I, and I, I think that, um, 
it's funny because it's like a lot about like parent, not parenting per se, <laughs> but kind of like my perspective on like growing up and yeah. living and like who I am and my regrets and my, um, you know, I'm not writing about like the scene and the kids and yeah, like yeah, yeah. people, people talking shit, you know? <laughs> so I, I think, I think like it's, I think I, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm glad that I did it. And the nice thing is also it's new. So it's like, it's, it's going to be what it's going to be, you know, yeah, totally. like would it be fucking awesome if, if it takes off? Yeah. If it ends up as being like, like something special that we have that yeah. we did together and, and that's fine too. You know what I mean? It's like, we're all at a place in our life where it's like just happy to have something to think about and care about. And, yeah. And is, is yeah, and, uh, go ahead. What's up? Okay. What are you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, and like, you know, that it doesn't mean that I won't do some battery stuff. Like I still love doing battery and I love those dudes and yeah. whatever, but it is really fun to have something new. Totally. And you mentioned like being a parent and stuff. How, 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 how did your life change when you became a parent? Like, do you, cause you have to, you, you get to balance it all. You know, you're like, you don't, you don't have like a normal nine to five, you know, you probably have more time to like, spend home. And, it, it was a, it was a pretty huge shock to my system at first, to be mm. honest. Like I was like, you know, working till midnight every night yeah. and the timing of it all, like Cassie was born in 2007 was like right around the like economic collapse. So it was mm. like all of a sudden we've got $2,000 a month in daycare and like labels aren't paying me and we're like got like major, you know, it was, it was an adjustment and, yeah. um, scary and, you know, you know, and, and then, and then it's like, all of a sudden it's like, you know, you have to kind of navigate your relationship with your wife or husband or whatever it yeah. is. Like it changes so much. It's like, um, but it's like, it's like the best thing. I mean, I, I, I like, I love her so much and she's, you know, it's like, it's amazing how like, you know, just like how awesome she is and like how, like, it's like, it's, I, I, I guess what I would say is the thing I'm most proud of in life is like my home life was so fucking miserable yes. when I was a kid. Yeah. And like, I got home from the first battery tour and my dad literally didn't know I was gone. Holy I mean, shit. where like, where like Cassidy is so like, loved and yeah she you know i mean she's she it's like she has problems and we're not perfect by yeah, any course. fucking stretch but like she is like my bro she has my older brother is like the best uncle you could ever imagine yeah. and like we're, we're you know we we eat together and talk and like i know all her friends and yeah. kids are here all the time and i just feel like that is like of everything in my life, like that probably is kind of the m most meaningful to me in that it's something it's like, she isn't living with the, the kind of trauma that, that I had. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to have kids and have it be that way. And it's yeah. like, that's something I can look at and say, Hey, you know, I can look at her and be like, I'm not that bad. You know, <laughs> I helped True. make this. My wife is fucking amazing with her. So it's, it's, you know, it's funny because, like, I dropped out of high school. And my wife got into Harvard, like, the same week. That is crazy. That's amazing. You guys balance, <laughs> you guys balance each other. That's amazing, though. Yeah. So we thought, the funny thing is, <laughs> then you met the two of us. She's, yeah. like, out of her fucking mind. And, you know what I mean? Like, is, like, stays up all night making weird art. And awesome. I, I, you know, at this point in my life, I have my shit together pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's So, yeah, I mean, so, obviously the way you grew up and your parents and then you become a parent, you definitely, you want to give them a complete opposite life. Have you, um, have you ever this late in the game in your life? Have you, have you talked to your parents about, do they know in a sense the shit? No, that they were they, not really I mean, there they, mentally? I don't know. They know. I feel bad. Cause my brother is like way closer with them. Yeah. Like, and this, what, what kills me for them is they're such great grandparents. Oh, wow. Like, they're so good with my daughter and so loving and so it's like, where were you when I was like, a kid? Yeah. 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 I mean, and, but I find it 
really super like anxiety producing to be around them. I'm sure. And I'm sure, uh, I have a lot of guilt about that because they want to like, my mom was a nun. So she's got like the whole oh, Catholic guilt wow. thing. Like dude, metal Mike's mom was a nun too. That is crazy. Yeah. Wow. But my mom will be like, my mom just like lays on the like, and I it like, sometimes it's like with my daughter, it's like, like my mom will be like, I haven't talked to Cassidy in so long. Do you think she remembers me? I'm like, don't <laughs> fucking want... put that on this little kid. Of course. Like, you know, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, we 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 don't like to talk about it. You know, we don't, we don't, mm. we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about it. And and I I know that my mom in particular feels awful, and yeah. I feel awful that she feels awful. And it's just like I just don't, you know. I yeah. Know, it's a, do you um? It's crazy. Did you do you have any regrets in life? Oh my God! Too many to count. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I ask people, they're like, no, I got nothing. I'm like, really? You sure? We all have that. In our uh, lives yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, yes, I do. But, but I, 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 I feel like I'm, I'm in a good place right now. Yeah. So, I mean, all the stuff you've so been through that, and everything, how you turned out and everything you've been through is fucking amazing, man. Like everything, just hearing your story, talking to you today, this is fucking, I mean, hardcore definitely, punk rock definitely saved your life, gave you confidence, made you feel yeah. like you belonged. You know, belong. You found your place in music and producing, and it, it, it's pretty yeah. amazing, man. That that, you know. Yeah, and the fucking crazy thing is, like, you and I met when I was twelve. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it's a fucking, it's the little web of like people that. Oh, you cut out. Shit. Like. In the same kind of sphere, we've all gravitated around each other all this time. It's like it's incredible. I mean, yeah, it really you, is. You just cut out for a second. You said it's like a small web. You said right before that, would you say? Yeah, and yeah. I, I was I was just saying it's like all of these people have just gravitated around yeah, each other man. for so long. It's like it's 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 amazing, like how how fucking cool it is. It's crazy. Um, do you have any um? Which what's like a daily like? You have any daily rituals? Like what's something that you do every day? Uh, coffee is first every day. Um, Respect. I've been, I've been, I've been trying to, uh, like, and then maybe, uh, I've been trying to run. Awesome. And that, 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 yeah. And that, that, that's, that's kind of like helped. Like when I can, when I can stick with that, I, it wakes me. I feel just kind of like alive. more alive. Yeah, a for bit, sure. You know, um, and, um, and that those are, you know, those are kind of, those are the, 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 the constants right now. Are you working on music right now? Like you produce anybody right now? Um, yeah. So, well, yeah. So I'm finishing, I'm finishing the Be Well full length right now, awesome. which is like, Focus on um, yeah. and I just finished up a new turnstile song for a skate comp. And awesome. then, um, Love them. and then let's see. Um, yeah. And, but with the producing stuff right now, I'm doing, I'm trying to do less prod. Like gotcha. I'm trying to do, instead of doing like 10 or 12 records a year, I'm trying to keep it to like three or four and kind of focus on like some of my own stuff and just great. life. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That, that's great. You're in a place to be able to do that too. You know what I mean? Focus on you. It seems like yeah. you, you put a lot of time in helping other people and do other things. It's good to have time, you know, focus on yourself too as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, do you have any, you have like a top five or any like what would be like your most influential artist or humans or anything that inspires you? Oh, uh, well, still inspire you, you know? Uh, well, okay, so the I would say like like I feel like um, Seven Seconds New Wind is like fuck yes with like uh was like the game changer record for me. Like that probably spoke that probably spoke to like kind of the outside me who I wanted. It just touched based on all of these like parenting and like Dude, man enough to care. Women's rights and yep. and things like that. And that was like that agree. was like the kind of like aspirational me. Mm. <laughs> and then the right to spring um full length is like the like literally like 
the most touching, like inside me kind of wow. record. Like he- that is like the things that are in my head that I don't like kind of like talk about. Yeah, record. Yeah. So I would say those, those two records are probably like kind of the most like kind of like defining of like my morality kind of yeah. in, in a sense. Um, and then I, I would say, the uh the cure is like one of my I you're are you into the cure yeah i love the cure yes yes yeah they're that's like just kind of musically like their kind of journey yeah it's um one of my favorites and then one of my all-time favorites is inside out wow <laughs> oh it's awesome and, and and but the thing of it so the coolest thing about inside out for me is that like my brother was doing this scene called free thought. Okay. And like, we like pen, we were like pen pals with all these bands Yeah, and we got the inside out demo oh, when, shit. um, w- b- before it was on rev and, yeah. and I, we got to see, we got to see them play. And that was literally like a life, a life changing kind of like emotional experience. Like I had yeah. never felt that just like, overcome by like everything yeah. <laughs> like it was angry but it was yeah. emotional and it was musical and it was all that and the best thing i'll never forget this it was at unisound and the, we had just finished the battery demo and my we knew the promoter at unisound yeah, I mean, and i gave yeah. him i i gave him the demo and he went over and gave it to the sound guy and they played the battery demo. And I'll never forget standing there and looking around the room and not that they were listening, but <laughs> <laughs> seeing like Walter and Ray and, you know, Zach and like all of these people that to me were like gods. And they were like, this is the, well, it was called Fury at the time. This is the new Fury demo from Washington, D.C. and played the demo over the PA. <laughs> and I just felt like, and I'm in eighth grade That's and I'm like, fucking amazing, dude. Oh my God. A- anyway. So, wow. and then I would say probably Fugazi nice. and nice. just because, I mean, the, it was like kind of the emotion of all the things that I love, but the yeah. musicality, but also like, I just feel like they really like, just like my kind of social and political awareness was yep. really enlightened by them like i'll never forget um i think you might have been there it was the fugazi soul side verbal assault show at there. wilson center yep and i was in seventh grade and i'll tell you like it's, it's you know it's not very like i had never in my entire life heard anybody talk about being gay as mm-hmm. like an okay thing okay it was bad it was embarrassing it was something that was like I had never Shunned. known no, anybody yeah. that was gay. Yep. I'd never been, I mean, it wasn't like my daughter has like trans friends and gay friends and it's, it's like too, yep. no big deal, but it wasn't like that. No. And it's it, the, the, the speech Ian gave was, um, was is in the, is in, it's in instrument, the Fugazi documentary, yeah. but when Fugazi is playing and they're like, jamming and it still shows what it was like so fucking emotional and these he gave the speech about um these gay guys that had been beaten up in dupont circle and how like fucked up it was to like be prejudiced against people for being gay and i literally said to my brother like like he's talking about like gay like like, that's so like okay like yeah i mean it was like i had never it was like it was like I, I I I had never experienced that, and mm-hmm. it like I, it it like literally like things like that in hardcore in general totally shaped yes like my like 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 four walls falling like like things that they sang about like social injustice it it it, it, it like just shaped my like view of the world yeah to, to this day and yeah, and and amazing. like I didn't have like you know woke parents that were like talking to me about shit the way that I mm-hmm. talked to my daughter about shit. Yeah. I had music and like, fortunately, yeah, like I was around this, like, and, and, and it was, it wasn't just like music. Like you're seeing it at the fucking arena. It no. was like, I'm standing five feet from this dude pouring his heart out. And not only am I hearing him, but I'm feeling the emotion of what he's saying. Yeah. And it's like sitting with me. And then, and then it doesn't, 
it doesn't take right away, but it's like, it was so emotional that it stuck with me over time. Like yeah. I, I ever I, after that, when people would say fag or say it would, it just started to feel like that's not okay. That's yeah. not fucking cool. And, yeah. and like, I just feel like, you know, like I'm just not sure like what type of person I would be had I not been exposed to like so much like awesomeness. Yeah, I mean, if, I mean, Ian was like a father figure probably to you too as well. He just the stuff, even embrace it. Embra- yeah. Embrace is another record that's fucking. Oh it's, my god! It's in my top five out of any record. I put that up like even though I love it. Nas, is. Like, it's it's it's, de- it's, de- it's it's definitely it's definitely in my top five. So it's funny because it's like again, it's kind of like it, it, that record is a little bit like my outside voice, and then uh, it writes things like my inside voice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Dude, be well. Yeah. Be well has a. A Rise of Spring vibe for sure, and Embrace vibe to me, for sure, man. I mean, that's like absolutely my biggest vocal, yeah. not influence, because I don't think I sound like that, but just the way that he like puts the words to the songs and like delivers the, the cadence and and all yeah. of that is just so like so like like for me, it's like really like you know special. And we'll go back to New Wind real quick. I mean, Man Enough to Care, like that song stuck with me as a kid i didn't even have a dad and i I, oh. I never never thought i was gonna even be a dad but that song to this day will make me tear up listening to it especially oh, being me, a me, parent me, right? me, me too a hundred percent daddy like, always told you like, do it like a man dude fuck it's i know man it's 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 like like i said like they're like not just boys font like yeah. did that record it's like i'm i'm telling you that was like my aspirational like this is mm. like I want, I want. I want to grow up to like make Kevin proud. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> but like, but nobody was singing about shit like that in the hardcore scene. Nobody no. was singing about that shit, dude. Nobody. No. Oh my god, that record is so good. And you know what's crazy is just nothing. It's really like seven seconds. Just it's like how many fucking great songs? Like yeah. it's insane. Yeah. It's just insane. And then they like they kind of like every record is totally different too. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's just the evolution of the band just made so much sense. And, 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 and I, I, I could talk about fucking. You Me too. We can't, I love Soul Force. I love Praise. I love, I love when they started getting oh more melodic. People hated them. I love that they were oh. fucking, dude, I love those records more than anything, the melodic ones. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, so, so Force, I'm like, is he even playing a guitar? What is that sound that's happening? Mm. Like, I can't, it's so like, Tangly and cool, and it's like it's it's just so it's so fucking cool, man. It's um, so cool. So that that was your top five. So right to spring, Fugazi. Um, what would you say? After seven seconds. Seven seconds, of course. That's three. Um, In, prob- inside out, and inside then probably out. the cure. Yeah, that's the great. thing about the cure is like mix. the cure it was like they were like the band that I that. I stuck with me through all of it yeah. and they were so musical and yeah. also emotional in just a really different way. Yeah. So that was always like a place I could go to that was like not hard, hard. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Did you like you too? Yes, I did. I loved you too. I mean, amazing. I loved you too, but I didn't have the same like emotional connections. You yeah. too. Like I loved, I loved it, but not, not in the same way that like, like pure disintegration I like probably have listened to that record like ten thousand times. Like yeah. I mean, it's kind of like crazy how much um, I've listened to that, and it's like super influenced. Like, like a lot of the like, like it's funny because it's like my production style is like, like kind of like punchy and like hardcore. Some, but then like when I got into doing the like thrices and circuit survives and things like that, like that kind of cure influence really like help me navigate yeah that that, that world um and then i I pretty much still answer this last question is that well two things first first of all i want to thank you for everything you put out there music and also it's like we knew each other for a very long time and and i i knew battery i heard songs throughout my life and then we toured together last summer and i mean i kept saying like they're our favorite new hardcore band when you guys have been around for just as long as we have but like some you have such incredible songs and just toying you guys and, and getting to know you guys more. And like, I love batteries so much and I'm happy you got to at least tour with you one time. You know, it was so fun. And like, right. I don't oh, know, it I was, loved it, it was man. fucking great. Th- yeah. That tour, you know, what's funny about that tour. It's like, I loved 
I love that tour. And I will be honest, I was a little nervous because like we had known each other for a long time, but yep. like I am like not comfortable being out there the way you are in mm-hmm. the world. Right. Yeah. Like, so I'm kind of like, what's this vibe going to be like? Like, am, <laughs> you know, like I'm like a pretty like sensitive dude, you know, yeah. like what am, am I going to be able to navigate? Like, you know, Toby and Adam, like these big personalities. And then like, I fucking loved every fucking minute of hanging with you guys. It was like crazy. Like Adam and I, you and I talking on yep. bus and like walks with Adam. It was just really, it was a really, um, it was a really special tour. And it was also fun. Like I was sort of telling my wife, it's kind of like, it was a, kind of like a wedding. Like it may never happen again. It wasn't about <laughs> anything except the moment. You know what I mean? Totally. Like it was, it was, it was, it was, it was cool. So, yeah. So what, what was the other question you had? Well, I already know the answer, but do you consider yourself an optimist or pessimist? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am definitely, I, I am definitely, um, I am a plan, plan for the worst, hope for the best, I guess, gotcha. is what I would say. A realist. I'm very hard on myself and I'm very prone to anxiety yeah you worry about things yeah but i am 100 percent like an optimist in the sense that like uh, i do think that things ultimately like when my head is clear i know that things like work out yeah i know that like i am surrounded by the most incredible and most talented people that like you could ever hope to know yeah and i I just feel like I am capable of a lot and, and, yeah. and like, I feel good about, you know, whatever. Now that being said, <laughs> I, <laughs> I worry and I, I, I like, you know, I, 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 I wish I could be positive always, Yeah, but I do. I, 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 We're I, not perfect, do, I do believe I'm not. I, I do believe I'm an optimist and, and when I, it's, it's, and when I look back at like, now, when I look at like what my friends have done and, and, and like how many incredible people that I've been able to like keep up with in life, yeah. you know, in a sense, yeah, I, it's just, it's like, it, it's incredible. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. we know the best people in the world. Like yeah. it's just amazing. And it's, it's like uh, so fucking awesome. That's like, my daughter gets to know these people and gets cause she, like she literally sees like the arc of my life and literally thinks like anything is possible. That's amazing. Man. So yeah, I like that. I it's love fucking that. awesome, man. Yeah. It's hard when yeah, you have a kid so. though. It's, it's just hard. Some for me, it's definitely a struggle as far as like the different chapters and the different ages of, of your kid as you see them grow and dealing with, you know, things in school and this, like, you know, what's happening in the government and the planet and just trying to like, know that one day I might not, I'm not going to be here on the planet with my son and I want it to be him to be okay. It's, it's just, I mean, all the stuff I can't control. So I shouldn't really stress about right. it. It is hard when you're, when you become a parent, you look at the world way different. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, well, it's, it's actually funny. Like with the parenting thing, cause like, like the beat well songs are pretty personal and they're like, at times I'm singing about things that are kind of dark, yeah. you know, because yeah. I'm singing, singing, singing about things that are like, I have a hard time saying otherwise. And, um, when we played that show with you guys in Philly, uh, and, um, and my daughter's there yes. and, and I'm thinking it's gotta be crazy for her to feel like hear me say some of this. And, mm. and then I'm like, and, and, um, and then it's like, but I want, like, this is who I am. And this is like, she needs to know that like, it's it, like that, that these like things exist inside of me as well. Yeah. Like if, if, if she doesn't know that she's never going to know me. And I feel like, you know, like that's like, even if it may be hard for her to hear me s- say something that is like, I don't want to say dark, yeah. but like, like, you know, real and painful yeah. and whatever, like if she doesn't know that, that I've had those feelings or that, those things have existed in my life. Yeah. She's never going to really know who I am. And then mm. I, I, I don't want that. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting. I mean, <laughs> being I mean, old, that, right? that, yeah, that, that show in Philly, man, 
you were like a totally different band to me. Like not sound wise, but from your first show to second, I don't know if that was your second show or not. It just, it just feel yeah, like you've been playing. Show, yeah. I feel like you guys been playing for so long. Maybe because your daughter was in the crowd. I don't know, man. It was just, I was like, holy yeah. shit. These guys are like, these guys are ready to go. I was just. Yeah. Yeah. No. Awesome. And I, I mean, I can't thank you guys enough for like, it was so cool to like play with you guys and have it be like friends and everybody be supportive. So that was, that was fucking sweet. Well, well I'm happy. I'm happy that you're in a good place. I, I know you, you struggle with, like you said, depression your whole life and dark places and all that. But I definitely feel like, you know, I, I don't know. I feel, I feel like just talking to you now, I know you're in a good place and everybody goes through shit. We're not perfect. We can't be positive 24 seven. We do our fucking best. Everybody struggles with shit. Right. And I feel like you've, you've, yeah. cha- you've channeled that in a positive way with lyric, lyric writing and you're producing and just you know, becoming a dad is everything. And like wanting to raise your kid in a totally opposite way you were raised. And I don't know. I feel, I feel like by just talking to you today, I got to know you a lot more and um, you definitely ha- have the PMA and, and throughout everything you've been like in the streets, going to the hospital, all that, you just, I don't know, you, you, you made your way through life and um, I'm so happy you're here, you know? Oh yeah, man. And I'm so happy that we've reconnected at this point in our life. And like every time I get a text from you, I just light up, man. It's fucking great. <laughs> so um, anyway, we'll sit, will you send your family my love? And I really appreciate you including me in this and of I, course, love these podcasts, I, lo- so. I love these I love you and I'm yeah. glad you're here and, and because of you and the listeners it's because of Brian in like two weeks I'm doing a part three with Mike Judge and we're going to break down Chunk Kick and Suck It so and that is what I want to hear man yeah we're doing it because yeah. of you and I, t- I told uh, Mike that you suggested that and he's totally down so though the part three of Mike Judge is because of you so I'm psyched to do this so it's going to be awesome I love it I love it okay, all right bro well, great talking thank you so much for your time give my love and my thank best to your family all right, send maximum my love. All right, buddy. Talk thanks, to you. Brian. Bye. Okay. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, please rate, review, uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, please do that. And whatever platform you are listening to this on, I'm glad you found me. You can rate me and review me on there also. So thank you guys sincerely for the support. I cannot wait for you guys to hear the next one.